inviting you to check out LS. Now, the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Locking down the middle of the day. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. This is Hunt Palmer. Hunt Palmer coming to you from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studio downtown in the capital city on this Monday. That means we're brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. Hope your work week is off to a good start. Got Jacob Beck and Cassie Spazali back there on the ones and twos. And we got lots to get to over the next two hours. Um, the Masters was this weekend. I'm going to talk about that. Michael Cobble is going to be along in an hour to talk about the LSU spring game. LSU and Tennessee played a baseball series, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, Michael Thomas's jersey number may be moving on. How do we feel about that, Saints fans? We'll talk about it at 2.15. I choose not to start my work week talking about LSU getting swept in baseball. I choose to talk about a football practice inside Tiger Stadium instead. How do we feel about that? I feel good about it. That's what we're going to do. Um, look, uh, it was a gorgeous day on Saturday for the LSU spring game. Um, I, I went to the game. I left at halftime because my wife wanted to get out to get to an appointment. I was like, yeah, you know, I can probably leave with David Nicholas making catches down the sideline and some guys I never heard of playing defensive line. I think we've probably seen enough. I'll catch the rest of the uh, game, uh, pull it up on YouTube later, and that's what I did. Uh, so I was informed, and I saw uh, enough, and I'm, I'm happy to talk about it a little bit. I think we all realize that this is just a practice. You're not going to be able to extrapolate out the entirety of the upcoming fall based on a practice inside Tiger Stadium where the quarterbacks can't get hit and you're playing your same team and nobody's showing a game plan. Like, we're all on the same page here. And I put a poll out on Saturday, like, what's your interest in the spring game? And there was actually a majority of the people that voted said, hey, I'll catch you in Vegas on Labor Day. I'm I'm fine without the spring game. But it is a chance to talk about some football uh, in the springtime. And I thought the most recognizable thing that I saw on Saturday was that Garrett Nussmeyer looked very comfortable, very confident, very accurate, uh, really was good. Now, he did uh, misfire on one deep ball to Chris Hilton that, that led him out of bounds a little bit. That play was called back for a penalty, so it's not in the stat sheet. And the long touchdown that he did end up throwing to Kyron Lacey, um, he missed him initially. There was a coverage bust, and Lacey was running wide open, and Nussmeyer did not throw it then. He stepped up and threw it a little bit late. But look, the stat sheet for Garrett Nussmeyer, 7 of 7 for 187 yards and two touchdowns. You're not going to get a whole lot better than that. They sat him down uh, halfway through the second quarter, and that's kind of about what we anticipated. Not necessarily speaking to Garrett Nussmeyer's play on Saturday, but just evaluating the situation in its entirety with a fourth-year college player who's been with the same quarterback coach now going on his third year, who has started the bowl game this past year, who has played in Tuscaloosa, played in an SEC championship game, is the son of a coach, and has the attributes that Garrett does, like, I'm very, very, very comfortable with where LSU is with his starting quarterback. I think LSU is going to have one of the best starting quarterbacks in the Southeastern Conference next year, and I think Garrett Nussmeyer is going to give LSU a chance to win a lot of football games. There are a lot of other things that go into winning games, and there are a lot of other personnel groups that have a lot more question marks. But as far as quarterback, based on what we knew about Garrett going into Saturday, the way that he played on Saturday, and kind of how we feel entering the summer— I feel really good about Garrett Nussmeyer as LSU's starting quarterback. I thought he played very, very nicely in the game. On the flip side, I didn't think it was uh, quite an awesome day for Ricky Collins nor A.J. Swan. Uh, Swan threw kind of a bad, ugly interception at the end of the warm-up period. Um, And both of those guys just did not look super comfortable back there. And it's a little bit of a concern because, yeah, I know that it's a brand-new system, and but you can't get hit. Like you should be pretty comfortable back there. They're not going to hit you, um, and it just looked a little. It looked both of them looked a little bit jittery. Now, Colin Hurley, I thought when he came out there, did look very comfortable, and he delivered the ball pretty accurately. And I thought had a nice, uh, nice little drive there, four of six for seventy-seven yards, and threw the the touchdown pass. I, I thought Colin Hurley did did a nice job. Um, so I thought really good from Nussmeyer, Collins, and, uh, Collins and Swan. Eh, 
And then I thought that, that Hurley looked looked pretty good. As far as the running backs go, they did give Caleb Jackson more carries than I thought. I, w I said on Friday, like, I think he'll probably be the MVP of the spring game because they only have two scholarship running backs, and I think the offensive line is going to dominate the defensive line, and he'll be the guy that capitalizes on that the most. And it was a day that produced a couple of highlights for Caleb Jackson. Um, obviously, the, the long one of 32 yards for a touchdown, the biggest, but he didn't do a ton outside of that. On the 32-yarder, he did showcase his, his agility and his speed. Uh, and he he looks the part when he gets up to the top speed. When he shifts it into overdrive, like, he can move for a guy that is that big. But there weren't a lot of creases for him to run in uh, for the majority of the day. He also had the fumble on the little pitch. I, this is pure speculation for me. Speculation, not fact. Speculation. I just feel like things like that dropped pitch or maybe a missed assignment on pass protection or a dropped pass or... Some of those details, Josh Williams just handles them better than Caleb Jackson. I think that's why the staff trusts Josh Williams as much as they do. If you put them side by side and let them do bench press reps or run a 40-yard dash or turn on the highlight tape, like Caleb Jackson is far superior to Josh Williams in just about every measurable category. But trust is a different one altogether, and it's probably the most important one. And I think they feel like Josh Williams is a little bit more dependable. Jackson just got to tighten it up a little bit. But the the pure ability is very, very evident and was so uh, in the game on, on Saturday. Um, they had Gamori and Pimpton out there a ton. He only got targeted three times. Aaron Anderson actually led uh, the scrimmage in targets. He had five targets. But Pimpton was targeted three times, had three catches. Um, that's the first time I've seen him like kind of get out and run a lot of routes in, in like live game action. We've seen some like seven on seven stuff um, with him and and red zone drills and whatnot. But um, he's he's a long dude, man. I don't know that he's the fastest tight end I've ever seen. Um, Mason Taylor runs a little bit better than he does, but it's just it's like a it's a lumbering and there's like a presence to him as he's running. And, and I, I I'm. I'm fascinated by Kamorian Pimpton. I'd like to see him involved a little bit more. I understand Mason Taylor has his position at the top of the food chain here at tight end, and I, I feel like Mac Markway has established who he is in this program as a guy that can do a little bit more blocking. Um, but Pimpton I'm fascinated by because I think he's a matchup problem. Again, the speed, not necessarily eye-catching, but just like his presence on the field in that frame, if he could add another 10, 12, 14, 15 pounds, like he's, he's going to be... Big, big dude uh, to deal with out there running some uh, some pass routes. Um, as far as the defense goes, you saw a really nice rep from Gabe Relliford who bent the edge, got around the corner, and, and picked up a sack. Um, I thought that was encouraging. I don't. It, it's really hard to expect freshman defensive linemen to come in and have a huge impact. Like It's just such a huge jump. You go from being the biggest, baddest dude on the field to being, in some cases, like, 75, 100 pounds lighter than the guy you're you're going against, depending on you know what Gabe Relliford is is checking in at. Um, I, 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 it's just you have to use so much technique and play the game so much differently at that position in college as opposed to high school. High school, you fire off the ball, you knock the guy out of the way, use you know your hands to get him off you, and you get a sack. These 340 pound offensive tackles in the SEC are a little bit tougher to deal with at times. Uh, so I'm, uh, I was, I was thrilled to see Relaford bend the edge. And if he can show some ability to rush the passer, like they're looking for that because we know Perkins can do it, but they're trying to do some different things for, with him. I don't know if Savion Jones can do it or not. I'm, I'm not a hundred percent certain about that. I I'd like to see some other guys step up. Maybe Deshaun Womack is that dude. And maybe Gabe Relaford is that dude. I, I think there are a few people that thought Relaford was the best player in the state of Louisiana in this past cycle. And you know, I'm certainly not going to boil his entire, you know, scouting report down to one snap where he gets a, where he makes a play, but it was nice to see a flash there. I, I, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, saw a lot of different DBs in and out of the lineup on defense. Um, Ashton Stamps was out there a ton. JV and Toviano was out there a ton. Um, and then you saw um, some of the newcomers. And I, I, I will say, like, there were some busts in the secondary. Like, there were some busts that they hit, and there were some busts that, that maybe LSU's offense was a little bit late to see. But you give up the big play to Caleb Jackson where your safety's not filling there. Uh, you give up the – Chris Hilton got got loose early, um, even though the ball wasn't thrown right on the money. Kyron Lacey was standing by himself in the end zone. You had the long touchdown to Kai Prien. Um, Like, there were, there were busts, and that's just part of it right now. Um, they've got to find first – 
the group of guys that can can do everything they need them to do athletically, and they got to get them all on the same page. And there's work to be done. And I don't think anybody down here is under any illusion that LSU's secondary ills are going to be cured just because Corey Raymond showed up and a couple of guys moved on and you brought in a couple of transfers. Like They've got a lot of work to do, and it was pretty evident uh, in multiple plays throughout the game on Saturday that, that there were still, still some busts. And that's a little bit concerning because you don't figure the offense is running anything super complex. You're not going to reveal anything you've got from a game plan perspective in the spring game. It's just going to be a lot of your normal route combinations. And for the secondary to bust the four, five, six times that it did is a little bit disheartening. But still, it's it's a spring practice. Bad things happen in practice all the time. That's what it's there for. You put it on the tape, you go learn from it, and you try to figure out uh, what you're going to do. So, again, not just some uh, earth-shattering day inside Tiger Stadium. I think for those that are the sickos that just want football any in every way they can get it, you got a little bit of that on Saturday. Had great weather to do it. And uh, now we enter the off season where the optimism just keeps cranking up and cranking up and cranking up. Um, we'll get some uh, recruiting uh, news over the next few months, and transfer portal is about to heat up big time over the next 10 days, and we'll see what LSU can do. But uh, nice finish to uh, to their spring inside Tiger Stadium on Saturday. Those are my thoughts. If you're looking for LSU football content, you can always find it on our YouTube channel, Hunt on LSU. Hunt on LSU. All football. There's no baseball there. There's no basketball there. It's football and recruiting. Hunt on LSU. We appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Like it, comment, all that uh, helps us out a ton with that algorithm there on YouTube. Our Monday show is brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products for all your printer needs, scanner needs, copier needs. It is Gulf Coast Office Products. Find them at gcopnet.com, gcopnet.com. We will take a timeout. We will come back, and we will talk about baseball, sadly. It's the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. ESPN Bet's ready to take you through all the huge sports moments this spring. The exclusive sportsbook of ESPN has it all, including offers and promotions from Scott Van Pelt and Stephen A. Smith. From the playoff intensity to getting on the links and out to the ballpark, there is no better time to be a sports fan. Sign up today. New users get $100 in bonus bets for making any sportsbook bet. Download ESPN Bet today. What a play. Must be 21 or older. Gambling club. Call 1-800-522-4700. In partnership with the Bears Lake Charles, terms and conditions apply. See app for details. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. 
Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck. Charles Hanniger, join us for the Tuesday edition of Live at Lunch from Mike Anderson Seafood, Wesley at Nicholson. We're getting you ready for the NBA play-in between the Pels and Lakers, and Andy Isco joins us from Las Vegas. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. Tuesday on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Four four five ESPN Baton Rouge and the Baton Rouge Clinic bring you the Dreams Come True Radiothon. Dreams Come True is an organization designed to help grant dreams for children with life-threatening illnesses and their families. The Dreams Come True Radiothon is presented today by Service Chevrolet, Lewis Mechanical, and the Lucky Law Firm. Donate today at 1045ESPN.com. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. So appreciative of uh, all you listeners that have uh, been generous enough to donate to Dreams Come True. We, once a year, uh, partner up with this great charity and ask for your help, if you're able, uh, to make some dreams come true for some youngsters here in the state of Louisiana, whether it's a trip to Disney World, a new puppy, meeting their favorite athlete. Uh, Dreams Come True is such an incredible charity, uh, putting smiles on kids' faces that are are in a a fight, and you all have been fantastic. Uh, with donating uh, if you had the means and 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 can we'd appreciate it if you go to 1045espn.com and donate today um it's been fantastic the folks at eagle have had, done a great job too tiger and talk as well um appreciate all of you out there in our listening audience for for making some dreams come true um lsu over the weekend goes to knoxville and gets swept and i am sad about it <laughs> um it's not completely unexpected uh, tennessee's excellent at home and lsu's played very poorly but it's, it's still tough to swallow. At least for me, it is. Um, you know, on Friday, you go with Gage Jump, and um, he gives up the two-run homer in the first inning, but you know, settles in a little bit, and you're in a 3-1 to one ball game uh, there in the middle innings, and then give up three spot in the fifth, and all of a sudden it's 6-1, to one, and you know, LSU just could not find a way to get a hit with runners in scoring position. It was the tail of the first two games of the week, and they just could not deliver that hit. And it hurt even worse on Saturday because you go with Luke Holman, your ace, who hasn't given up a hit through five innings, and you're just not able to do anything offensively. And Griffin Herring, yes, gave up the hits early when he came into the ball game, but he settled and steadied, and those two guys combined to pitch a great game for you. They gave up three runs on five hits against the best offense in the Southeastern Conference. But LSU, who out-hit Tennessee 9-5, to could not get a hit with runners in scoring position. LSU was 5-for-23 with runners in scoring position over the weekend. That's a 217 batting average. And on Saturday, when your ace went and your best bullpen armed and they delivered a quality performance, you were 1-for-10 with runners in scoring position. And... This is something that I disagree with most people on. It's it's just a fundamental difference in thought. But I'm steadfast in my belief. Like, this team can't get clutch hits is not worth a discussion point. It's a massive piece to winning in baseball. I get that. But I don't find it as a relevant discussion point because it's not something you can work on. And it's not something, some, there aren't any bad hitters who are good clutch hitters, and there aren't good hitters who are bad clutch hitters. You're either a good hitter who's going to get hits in the clutch more often than not, or you're not. And right now, there are too many guys in LSU's lineups that just don't hit, period, in SEC play. So, therefore, they're not going to hit with runners in scoring position. You can't go to practice and work on clutch hitting. You just have to be a better hitter. And LSU does do a decent job in league play of getting runners on base. They do a very poor job 
of stringing hits together. And it's because they're just not a great offensive team. So, in those two games, you don't do enough. And then, you actually do get a little bit of offense in the Sunday game. You get a big eighth-inning two-run home run from Tavi White, but you've already just given up a two-run home run to Christian Moore, and your bullpen falters at the end. Like, unless you did some things differently this week. It's not like Jay Johnson's sitting on his hands. He started three true freshmen. Jake Brown, Stephen Milam, and Ashton Larson all started in the Sunday game. Instead of going to Christian Little or Will Helmers or Javen Coleman this weekend, he did twice go to Cam Johnson and Aiden Moffitt. He's hitting Jared Jones in the leadoff spot. He's moving Michael Braswell to the leadoff spot. They did try to run some, uh, to, to steal some bases this week. It, they're not just sitting on their hands. It's just not good enough. Every single aspect is lacking. I went through this in the column that I wrote for on three today, but like I mentioned the timely hitting that hasn't been great. How about execution? Like, hey, Paxton Kling, first and second, one out. On Sunday, need you to get a bunt down. Well, he bunts it right to the pitcher. I mean, right to the catcher and deadens it, and they throw the guy out at third base. Like, that's that's poor execution. Lack of awareness. Hayden Travinsky is not running to second base on Sunday, and the first baseman, when Blake Burke was going to put it in his pocket, but then realized, oh, he's not running, and threw him out at, at, at second base. That could have been a big inning, but you don't have the awareness. You get thrown out. Tommy White on Friday. Two outs, infield hit, stopped by Christian Moore going up the middle, and you get back picked at second base. Uh, sorry, third base. Now, I don't know if that was Josh Jordan's fault, at the third base coach. I couldn't see on the replay. I don't know if Tommy White wasn't paying attention, but it's just a lack of awareness by everybody involved. I mentioned, like, your pitching was really good on Saturday. You couldn't hit. Well, you got a couple big hits and hit a home run on Sunday, but your bullpen lets you down. Just far too much of that time and time and time again. I got Paxton Kling and... Mac Bingham running into each other trying to catch a fly ball between center and left. Now, Kling caught it, so it was no harm done, but, like, it's just bad baseball. It's across the board with this team. It's offensively. It's defensively. It's effort. It's focus. It's clutch play. It's on the road. It's at home. Any way they can find to lose a baseball game, they're finding a way to lose it. They're now... One and eight in their last nine SEC games. Like, that's hard to fathom that they could be that bad, but they have been. And my concern falls on morale around that team. Like, it's still relatively early in college baseball season. Now, because of the records you put yourself in, it doesn't feel that way to LSU, but there's a lot of baseball left. And it's just hard for me to imagine. A bunch of guys who showed up on campus thinking they were going to play for a national championship, play for a conference championship, play for a top eight national seed, and look up and be three and 12 through 15 league games. Three and 12. Like, it just, it's just not a lot of fun to get up early and go lift weights when you're three and 12. It's not a lot of fun to go to practice when you're three and 12. It's not a lot of fun to talk to the coach when you're 3 and 12. It's not a lot of fun to talk to your parents when you're 3 and 12. And that can weigh on you. This is it's this these are the same types of discussions I feel like I was having in the 2020 and 2021 football seasons. Now the 2020 football season was crazy cuz it was a pandemic and like everything was weird. But when you go to LSU and you play football or baseball, you expect to be in the mix to compete for championships. And when you are this far removed from it, like that is a shock to your system. And these guys have got to be like that. I'm sure Jay is like that. We could have all sit here and forecast a bumpy start to league play through five weeks. I remember distinctly back at Christmas, my dad and I having a discussion, and he said, well, would you take would you take eight and seven through the first 15? I said, oh, absolutely, I would take eight and seven. He's like, oh, no way. I said, I would take eight and seven. I would take seven and eight. 
I think at seven and eight with the, the rest of this schedule, you'd be in an okay spot. But you're four games behind that. Four games behind that. And this town, which whips itself up into a frenzy every January, getting ready for this, it, a lot of it's checked out. Like, a lot of my friends have, have bailed. Doesn't matter this week because you're going to play Missouri. But it's just, it's a tough spot to be in for this LSU baseball group. And it's just, there's not one thing that you can point to. Like, last year, you could look and go, God, they, they just got to find two or three more pitchers. Two or three guys have got to step up. And once that happened, they took off. Floyd stepped up. Cooper stepped up. Gidry stepped up. And eventually Hurd stepped up, and, and then they became the best team in the country. Two years ago, it's like, okay, let me figure out who's going to start some games and get some outs. Like, you felt pretty good with Razelman and Gervais and Cooper in the back end, and Hilliard was okay. And then, like, but you, you knew, like, where the problem was. There are so many problems here, they can't all be corrected. You've got holes in your lineup. You've got holes in your staff. It's, there's just too much. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll step away, and I'm going to bring up some numbers that kind of illustrate this, this entire point. We're going to go big picture here as opposed to just the Tennessee series and kind of where they go from here. But I spent a lot of time pouring over stat sheets today and kind of going over numbers that I hadn't necessarily analyzed previously. And we'll get to that coming up next. You are now listening to The Hunt Palmer Show. Audio Video Security Solutions, A-V-S-S-L-A.com. Uh, I love Mitchell Fisher and those guys. Such a great professional company right here in Baton Rouge. And they do great work. Have them come out and look at your home, whether it's audio system, it's out by the pool or out by the grill or surround sound near the television or in the bedroom. You want speakers in the bathroom. They can handle all that video. They're fantastic at mounting televisions and getting your home entertainment system set up. And they've also got security systems as well. We've got ours. We've got an app here. I can look at cameras on the front door and back door of my house 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I can play it back. Don't have to worry about cloud storage fees. It's all run through Audio Video Security Solutions. Online, you can find them at avssla.com. That's avssla.com. You can also find them on Instagram, avss underscore br. If you want to look and see kind of some of the examples of some of the things that they can do, like if you're like me, you don't even know what the possibilities were, you can check that out on Instagram. Get in touch with them and have them come over and set you up as the summer months do approach. It's audio video security solutions at avssla.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. 
Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today. Or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million... This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. Our baseball breakdowns all season long, brought to you by Pluckers Wing Bar. Pluckers Nicholson, just south of campus, small Louisiana, on Blue Bonnet. Always a great option to get on by. Get some awesome chicken wings, cheese fries, cold beer over at Pluckers. Get over by and see the uh, Braggy's Creole Crush Sauce. Very, very good. Stuff. Um, I looked at LSU's SEC only statistics today. Um, you're halfway home, so it's kind of easy to digest them at the exact halfway point. point. And there's some stuff that's really good. Uh, Griffin Herring has a 1.15 ERA in 15 and two thirds innings. He has struck out 24 and walked four. He's just been fantastic. Um, Luke Holman has struck out 35 in 26 and a third innings. Um, his batting average against is only 216. He's been really, really good. Tommy White's numbers in league play are just fine. He's hitting 302 with eight home runs at the halfway point. You told me a guy might hit 16 league home runs. That's fantastic. The RBI numbers are down a little bit because he didn't have as many guys on base, but um, 302 is a good SEC average, and he's got a lot of home runs. Hayden Travinsky's hitting 296 in league play. That's just fine. He's got four homers. That's that's good. Um Michael Braswell is getting on base at a 464 clip in SEC play. He's hitting 333 in league games, 15 for 45. Ashton Larson in league games is hitting 357. Now it's a smaller sample size, but he's 10 for 28. He's got a couple of homers. He's got three doubles. He's been very good. That's kind of the end of where the good is. And I don't want to harp on this because like the kids are giving everything they got. But this is just a, a fact, in my opinion. Well, it's a fact. My opinion is going to be supported by the fact. I said in de December and January that this team was going to reach its ceiling or floor based on the performances of the rising sophomores, of Brady Neal, Paxton Kling, Ethan Fry, and Jared Jones. I said, look, I know what Tommy White is. I know what Hayden Travinsky is. I know what Michael Braswell is. Mac Bingham's got a track record. Josh Pearson does as well. Alex Malazzo. Like, those guys are going to be kind of who they are. Whether or not this thing takes off or bottoms out is going to largely de be determined by, like, these highly regarded sophomores who haven't played a lot. Like, what are they? Well, in league games, Brady Neal is 3 for 31. That is 0-97. In league games, Paxton Kling is 3 for 25. That is 120. In league games, Ethan Fry is 4 for 22. He's hitting 182. And Jared Jones is hitting 250 with four home runs. Jones hasn't been atrocious. But when you put Brady Neal, Paxton Kling, and Ethan Fry together, they are 10 for 78. That is a 128 batting average. They do not have a single home run, and they had struck out 31 times. That's 
that's just not going to get it done. And so they've gone to Larson and they've tried Pearson and they've tried Brown and it went, they've, they've tried some things, but like those are the guys who were supposed to take that next step. Sophomores in college baseball should be ready to roll. And for whatever reason, whether it's missed evaluation, whether it's lack of development, whether it's the fact that Brady Neal hadn't been able to practice, he's been hurt, and Ethan, I, I don't know why. But those guys have been not like, uh, just not great, like just as bad as they could be. Like again, I feel bad. Like I don't I'm not trying to pile on, but like I'm just reading the numbers here. I don't know what else to to do. But it's not just them. Trust me. I could keep rolling through here. I mean, Mac Bingham hit three sixty at Arizona last year in league games, he's hitting two fifty four. Josh Pearson is a third year player who's been really, really good in some big moments. In his three years at LSU, he's hitting 229 in league play. He struck out 12 times. Like, the ERAs are terrible almost across the board. Gage Jump's SEC ERA is 7.66. Nate Ackenhausen's is 7.62. Justin Lohr's is 7.71. Javen Coleman's is 9.95. Thatcher Hurd's is 10.12. Kate Anderson's is 16.88. After Herring and Holman, like there's just nothing quality about any. They're, they're all over seven. In some cases, they're north of ten. I don't. I just could not have forecasted Javen Coleman's SEC batting average against being three fifty seven. Justin Lores is three eighty one. SEC hitters are hitting three eighty one against him. Like you just thought these were going to be the guys that were nails. Gavin Gidry, 10.8 SEC ERA. It's, it's just everywhere you look, there's been underperformance. And I just, this snowball has started rolling, and I just don't know how to stop it. And Jay's trying. But you can't pitch Holman and Herring every day. So this time they went with the younger players, and I think you're going to see younger players continue to play the rest of the way. Larson is going to play. Milam is going to play. Cam Johnson is going to pitch. Aiden Moffitt's going to pitch. But you've dug yourself such a massive hole that I just don't see a way out of it. I, 10 and 5 just seems so unlikely to me over the last five series. You're the only team in the league that hadn't won a series yet. The only one. You went from last year being the only team that was not swept through 10 weekends to the only team at this point through five weekends that has not won a series. And if you've listened to Matt Musa and you listen to Charles Hanegriff, they can't find the last time LSU started this poorly in conference play. I talked about this last week, and it's no less true today than it was last week. But the SEC is as tough as it's ever been because West Coast baseball is dead. And... Players even from the ACC and Big 12 are leaving to come to the SEC. So you've got college success stories that are playing in the SEC. You've also got more high-profile high schoolers going to the SEC instead of taking the money. It's as tough as it's ever been in LSU's. Tough, LSU and Auburn played a ridiculous gauntlet the first five weeks, and they have five wins total to show for it. So I got asked a couple of times this weekend, like, are they even going to make the NCAA tournament? No, is the answer. They're not. Like, I'd love to sit here and be wrong. I'm thrilled that I was wrong last year when I hammered the panic money on the bullpen. But at this point, you cannot look at this and look at these numbers and what they've gotten offensively and on the mound and think, yeah, they'll just flip the switch. They'll go to Missouri and sweep them, and they'll come back and play a bad Auburn team, and they'll sweep them, and they've still got Ole Miss and Bama who aren't very good, and they'll – They'll handle those two, two out of three, and they'll they'll get one or two against eight. Like it's just, there's nothing to suggest that. Of course, it's not impossible. But I'll tell you this, and I'll, I'll I'll double down on this at the end of the week. I I try my very hardest to avoid cliches. I think they're empty, hollow, easy, lazy. I hate them, and I hate hyperbole. I think it cheapens your words when you are prone to exaggeration. But this weekend, 
at Missouri is actually a must-win series. We say must-win all the time. Never is. I think Sharif used it on a Pelicans game like a month ago. Not a must-win. You have time to, to fix it later. This weekend, two out of three is non-negotiable. You go up there and win one or zero, lights out. It's over. It's as close as it can be to being over right this second as we sit here. But it's not. It's a long season. You're going to have to go nuts down the stretch. We know all the examples. Tennessee last year, Ole Miss the year before that, 2008 LSU, all that. But these, this stat sheet that I was looking at today is just, it's hard to swallow. The ERAs, the batting averages, the strikeouts, it's just brutal. And they have to go to Columbia and get two or three. And it's a tough place to go because I looked at the attendance for the Florida series. The game I clicked on was 1,400. And Missouri's worse then than they were now. Worse now than they were then. So, you know, it's conceivable you go up there and Missouri has 850 people in the seats. You better bring your own energy. And I worry about LSU's energy right now because I'm looking at guys that aren't running to second base hard, that aren't communicating in the outfield. That It just feels, feels like a, they're in a bad way. And you're not going to get a shot of life going up there to Columbia, Missouri. Got to find some way, somehow, to get two or three and then revisit the conversation. But the math gets very, very difficult for LSU. And uh, it's, it's just disappointing to look at those numbers. It's just not, not something I could have forecasted back in January. I don't think you ever really see these coming, but it's, uh, it's tough. Our baseball breakdowns all season long brought to you by Plucker. Still plenty to get to here on this Monday. Hope your work week is off to a good start despite talking about a little bit of baseball. Michael Cobble is going to be along at 2 o'clock talking LSU spring game. Uh, the Saints have issued Michael Thomas's jersey number. I'll tell you who to uh, coming up in hour number two. We've got plenty, plenty to get to. So don't go anywhere. You're listening to a Monday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. One Bath and Closets. OneBathandClosets.com is the website. David Duvall is his, and his team, 30 years redesigning and remodeling bathrooms and closets. So always talk about the customization that he can do in your bathroom or in your closet and fantastic work David and his team do. But we also mention safety a lot when we're talking about one bath and closet. If you've got an aging loved one uh, who lives at home, maybe by themselves, bathroom can be a hazardous place. Non-slip floors can be a lifesaver. Talking about great options like handrails near toilet and shower areas, benches that can be put into the shower, walk-in tubs as well. They can do all those things that can make the bathroom a safer place for the aging loved one in your life. If that rings home for you, go get the free consultation with David Duvall and his team. Go to onebathandclosets.com. Click that button right there at the top right. While you're there, you can look at testimonials, pictures of their awesome work. Get that consultation, which doesn't cost you a cent, and get things squared away on the home front with David Duvall and One Bath and Closets. Check them out online, onebathandclosets.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans.
Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Kona inviting you to join us for Monday's AFR, presented by Relief Windows. We'll recap the LSU spring game, the Tigers and Vols in baseball, and we'll know the Pels playoff destination. Join us Monday, 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge. You're listening to the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. Shout out to the folks at Gulf Coast Office Products. Printer needs, copier needs, scanner needs, gcopnet.com is the website. Guy Trey Beal, awesome to work with, and highly suggest that you give him a call with your printing, copying, scanning needs. I think maybe a lot of times people that run a business don't think about that very much. Just give me the best one you can find, that's whatever. But there are a lot of different options for different industries whether you're in healthcare, you're an attorney, whether you're like us and you're a media company that's got to deal with proposals and, 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 and whatnot, might need to look into something specific that's tailored to you with a printer, copy, or scanner. Trebule's got clients in every so, single vertical, vertical market you can think of. Gulf Coast Office Products, awesome, awesome people right here in Baton Rouge can service you statewide, gcopnet.com. Uh, the Masters wrapped up yesterday. Scotty Scheffler wins his second green jacket, number one player in the world. Um, incredible performance. He's just better than everyone at this point. Um, I did on Wednesday take $100, cut it up into five $20 bets that I liked for the upcoming tournament. And as is tradition, we'll go back now and see how those panned out. So, Beck, I know you've got them handy. This is on Wednesday's show Entering the Masters, I had twenty uh, five twenty dollars bets. Here's bet number one: betting Scotty Scheffler to win the golf tournament is not necessarily going to net you a lot of cash. He is a prohibited favorite. He is the best player in the world. However, you can bet him to win by three shots or more for plus seven hundred. I don't think that's a terrible play. I could throw twenty dollars at that for uh, to win one hundred and forty coming back. So Scheffler to win by three or more is my first bet. Uh, Love to see that. That's a winner. Scotty Scheffler wins by four shots. Um, he didn't four putt on the 18th as he did to win his first Masters, um, but he did have a little bit of a cushion there. Um, so look, that was Scheffler to win just wasn't a great option. But he's he's better than everybody right now, and the the rest of the guys crumbled around him on the back nine. Max got a little bit of a, a tough break on 12 with the ball skipping up into the bush. You saw Oberg hit it into the water on 11. Um, Bryson fell apart. Like it just, there were, everybody made the big mistake. Scotty never makes the big mistake. And that's his greatest superpower is that he just doesn't have bad days. He doesn't even have really bad holes. He had the one double on Saturday, but he just, he's just boom, consistent, consistent, consistent. He hasn't shot around over par this year. Not one, not one day 
where you, you couldn't make the putts. And not one day where you hit hit a ball out of bounds and made a triple. Like, he just he never does that. And he didn't again um, in that one. So that's a winner on the first bet. Uh, let's go to the second one. Uh, Rory McIlroy to win wire to wire, including ties. So as long as at the end of every round, he is tied for the lead or in the lead and wins the golf tournament, uh, a $20 bet on that will win you $1,400. Uh, that's a plus 7,000 bet there. So $1,400 coming back on that $20 bet. Rory was what he's kind of been in majors over the years. He, he put a real run into it at St. Andrews uh, with Cam Smith the year he won a couple years ago, uh, but really hasn't done a ton else in the major championships. He had a, a great go of it early in his career, and it's been just it's been a long time since he won, so that one, that one missed. I really liked the next one, uh, and it did not hit either. One of the guys that's playing exceptionally well, but nobody knows about it because nobody watches the tour he plays on, is Joaquin Neiman. I would put 20 bucks on him to win the golf tournament at plus 2,000. That would win $400. He finished tied fourth. Uh, I mean, he finished, sorry, tied fourth, plus four in the golf tournament. Just didn't didn't play very well. And it was just, it was a tough tournament um, because Augusta got what they would prefer, which is a, a firm and fast set of greens that were difficult on a lot of guys who don't hit it especially high. Joaquin Neiman hits it pretty low. Um, I thought maybe the rain coming in on Wednesday would help him there. Did not. He uh, did not win it. All right, next bet. One of the longer shots in the field that I like, and not necessarily to win, but to maybe top five, is Chris Kirk at plus 2,800. If you bet $20 on that, you can get 560 coming back. I Yep, didn't work. Tie 16 for Chris Kirk. He did make the cut, and he was around round for the weekend, but tied 16 did not finish in the top five. And the last one. Akshay Vati has never seen this golf course. He might have some shoulder issues. Missed the cut, plus 160. That's $20 to win, 32 there. Cut was six over. He was three over at cut time, so that one did not cash. I did hit on the Seffler uh, win by three or more. None of the other ones got home, but that's a that's a plus 700 win there to win 140 bucks. So would have coming out on the positive side if I had placed those bets. I, I did not. Back here, I, oh, first of all, do you have a, a thought on the golf tournament? I have a thought on outside the golf tournament, but on the actual tournament itself. Um, yeah, well, I I do have one. I do have some thoughts on the out, outside the tournament as well. Just just from some of the performances that the guys uh, some of the guys put in, but. I think it's even though Max Homa he did like you said he got a little unlucky on twelve there. So in my in my opinion, I don't think he really blew up, and and it was good to see him be in contention on Sunday yeah. at, at a major, which we haven't really seen yet in his in his career. And we we all I think most people expect that that Homa has th most people expect and think that he has the talent to win a major. So that was good to see. And then, I was disappointed in Max after he makes the double on yeah, third on right. on twelve. To not pull driver on 13 yeah, and try yeah. to go get it back. Like, yeah. Scotty's not going to come back to mm -hmm. you. And he's, he laid up with a three wood and then he laid up on his first and he, he didn't stick the wedge. Yeah. And he makes par on, on 13. Like, that's and, that's not playing to win the golf and tournament. I, yeah. And I think that he did that just because that's what he's done all uh, yeah. throughout the whole tournament. But at the same time, you have to change your your strategy as, 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 as what is given to you. And in that situation, he didn't, yeah, he needed, even, obviously, even if he would have birdied, he wouldn't have got him any, that much closer, but he still should have done it, but yeah, I agree with you. And then other than that, I think, uh, I think also seeing uh, DeChambeau play as well as he did, I mean, obviously, he had blow-up holes too, but uh, he's never played well at the Masters, and he played, he played pretty well, and it, and it makes me think that he's probably going to be in contention in a few of the other majors. I was pulling against him very hard, as you yeah. might imagine. Um, Here's uh, just I just saw this on my Instagram feed. Um, Scotty Scheffler was seen last night. He was at Inwood Tavern in Dallas. I don't know anything about Inwood Tavern and don't really care, but I think it's noteworthy that he's seen taking a picture with the group here with his green jacket on in the clothes he played in. Like you wouldn't after you know playing 18 holes change. at Augusta, maybe go grab a shower in the Champions locker room before you got on the private jet to go home. I guess not. I, I think that I think I probably would. I mean, I probably would too. I think. <laughs> it just, and then yeah. he like goes out to the bar. He's in the same. I wonder if he's got his golf shoes on. Like he he's in the same clothes he played in. That to me is a, is preposterous. But um, look, Scotty right now is on a heater that we haven't seen in a very very long time. Um, as far as the consistency in play, of course, we saw uh, Jordan Spieth go on his run where he won those three majors real quick, and we saw Colin Morikawa get two really quickly, and we saw Brooks Koepka with that great run. Uh, winning four in a, in a short time, and he won again last year. Um, so it's not like completely unprecedented, but just what he's doing in, as far as finishing in top tens, top fives, and then winning golf tournaments, like he and Tiger are the only guys that have ever 
won the players and Augusta, and and he's won now the players twice. He's won at Augusta twice. Um, he is significantly better than everyone else in the world. And to hear Colin Morikawa, two-time major champion, um, Ryder Cup player, top five player in the world at times, say like, look, man, like he hits it way further than me. Uh, he hits it way straighter. Like his chipping is better than mine. Like everything, he's speaking in such reverence about Scotty Scheffler. It's like, it feels like Scotty's starting to have kind of a presence on tour where like, that's a guy you have to fear. Like, I don't know if everybody feared Jordan Speed. I think yeah. they probably feared Brooks Kepko on those beast golf courses where he was winning the PGA and U.S. Opens. But, like, I think they start – not that he's he's the least intimidating guy ever in person, but, like, his golf is frightening to those guys out there on the tour. It was uh, an anticlimactic watch, but nonetheless an impressive watch from Scotty Scheffler back uh, in Augusta yesterday. So that'll do it for hour number one here on the Hunt Palmer Show. Uh, we'll pause for Sports Center. come back with Michael Cobble talking LSU spring football. Come back with us on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. When it comes to ending cancer, we push forward, always working together for you. That's why our cancer experts at Oshner have clinically integrated with MD Anderson Cancer Center. This means advanced cancer care, including access to life-saving clinical trials and integrating care to treat the whole you. Introducing Oshner MD Anderson Cancer Center. Long live you. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SEA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. It's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com.
At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Oh, by the way, we do shutters too. I'm Christine Lisi. Countdown continues to the most anticipated WNBA draft in years. All eyes on Caitlin Clark, widely projected to be taken first overall by the Indiana Fever, Angel Reese, Cameron Brink, Camilla Cardoso, among the other stars who will share the draft stage with her tonight. Part of one of the most important off-seasons ever for the WNBA, points out ESPN's Chanae Agwumake. Mind you, the WNBA is only 28 years old. Yeah. So if you look at where the NBA was in 28 years, they were looking for leaps, and then they got Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. Not saying that Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese are Larry Bird, Magic mm. Johnson, but you're mm. seeing a similar trajectory of star power that matters in the echelon of the women's basketball overall. Janae on Greeny, draft coverage 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. NFL Eagles and receiver Devontae Smith agreed to a three-year extension, tying him to the team through the 2028 season. ESPN's Adam Schefter reports deals worth $75 million, $51 million guaranteed. Eagles also exercise his fifth-year option for 2025. NBA Suns guard Grayson Allen agreed to a four-year $70 million deal. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Kennedy. Coming up Tuesday, I'll tell you the draft prospects that I believe are no doubt future all pros. It's Unsportsman like 6 a.m. Eastern right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Ladies and gentlemen, may I direct your attention to something quite extraordinary. Now, the Hunt Palmer Show. The Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Live, Live from the Mercedes-Benz Mercedes of Baton, Baton Rouge Studios. Studios. This is Hunt Palmer. Hour number two, Hunt Palmer Show, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Hope your work week's off to a good start. Thanks for hanging out with us here at the Hunt Palmer Show. Got some Saints news coming up in 15 minutes, but we want to talk some LSU football with Michael Cobble, sports director over at WBRZ Channel 2. He joins us now on the Jim's Fire Arms Hotline. Michael, how are you? Doing well, doing well, Hunt. How are you doing? I'm quite well. How was your uh, Saturday at the spring game? It was nice. It was a lovely day. Uh, easy in, easy out. Not a lot of people there. Traffic was a breeze. Um, you know, saw some, saw some reaffirming football, you know, when I was thinking about what I was going to talk about today basically it was a, a confirmation of what we expected both the, the good and the bad so, uh some of that you already touched on in your opening monologue I, I, I was listening and um but i'm happy to talk about whatever you want yeah no what uh what was good what what'd you like i mean the fact that the offense went out there and functioned the way that we thought it should you know i think that was the first thing right it's one of those deals where you're like okay we have an idea of what they should look like can they live up to that and and they did right i thought Nuff was great. I thought the offensive line was super. I loved that they got a lot of different receivers involved. I love that they worked in the tight end. One of the one of the players that stood out to me was Camorian Fenton. Um, really happy to see the tight ends maybe make some progress and get involved in the passing game the way they did. Um, sure, you know we kind of knew what the run game was, and, and that's basically what it was. Uh, can't wait to see what it looks like in the fall. But uh, you know, offensively, it was it was good to see. One of the other things that I thought was good to see was, was the linebacker play really the depth of the linebacker play. West Weeks really flashed to me. Um, you know, he, he was a guy that I wasn't expecting a lot out of, but, but saw a lot from. Um, and uh, Sean Womack was another player that you, you saw him make a number of plays, and you're like, okay, maybe the light bulb, you know, turned on for him. So it's something that, that, you know, he can take forward and, and build upon. So that was some of the, some of the highlights, I guess. What's uh, Garrett Nussmeyer like when you all chat with him? He's great. He's he's. I feel like, you know, there's two different things. Like, I feel like there's the Nussmeyer that he wants to be and probably is, and there's the Nussmeyer that he knows he should be or, you know, kind of is, is in this leadership role now, so he has to, you know, play a little bit more straight and, and toe the party line and give a, an answer that maybe isn't really what he's thinking but what he should say kind of situation. So, um, but he, he's been great. Um you know, pretty honest and open and, and, you know, talking about his teammates and, you know, the things that they need to improve upon and kind of the direction that they go. 
So I just, I just think that he, from from a interview standpoint, he's been fantastic. Is it? Uh, does that remind you of anybody that you've covered over the years at LSU? I'm, I'm thinking about like specific s- situations that might have paralleled it. Like Matt Flynn was here a long time before he played. Uh, Zach Mettenberger was here for a full year and uh, before before he took over. Uh, it was later in his college career. Like, is it reminds you of any of those situations? Um, maybe in just the seasoned nature of it. Like they they know how to play the game. And when I say play the game, I mean do the interviews, and handle the media, and you know do the dance kind of thing. Um, Flynn was a very different character. He was uh, interviewing Matt was a little bit of a chore because he didn't really want to talk and didn't want to give anything away. So uh, he was. He was a bit of a pain in the butt, if I'm being honest. Um, and Mettenberger was probably very similar to, to Flynn in that regard. So Nussmeyer's no, nah, Nussmeyer's easy. Um, but you know, you do see that polish, I guess, and, and that experience that you that you alluded to. Uh, I was just wondering, you know, you asked me that was a really good question, and there weren't any comps that came to mind right away. So I'm, I'm glad you led me down that path because I would not have made that connection otherwise. What about wide receiver? Man. Um, you know, again, kind of like what, what we thought. It was good to see Aaron Anderson really go up and get some balls. Uh, he's been a guy that you hear his name a lot, but uh, quite honestly, I haven't seen the production from. So good to see him, you know, make some, some difficult catches. Uh, again, Kyron Lacey, I think, just is what he, you know, is expected to be. Uh, he, he's just that guy. And uh, now it'll be about the consistency. To me, that was the, the difference with Malik was just the consistency turned up um, to 100, you know, and like, he was able to be that guy every practice, every every game, every pregame, you know. Like, and and maybe that has a lot to do with other people looking at you to, to set the tone and the example. But Kyron's doing a great job with that. Still would like to see Shelton Sampson get a little bit more involved. I feel like he's waiting where he really needs to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, still a little undersized, so, you know, m- that might be the thing. But, but if he has a breakout year, you know, next year, if he's still in Baton Rouge, uh, you know, I could see that kind of having a Brian Thomas type year next year when he grows into his body just even a little bit more. Caleb Jackson's a guy that you've seen for a long time, uh, cover him on Friday yeah. nights as well. Uh, what do you think about his progress? I think he's fine. Um, had a, you know, took his eyes off the ball and, and, yeah. and lost a pitch. Um, and that's him, right? Like, like, honestly, that is Caleb. There's a little bit of immaturity to him. That there always has been. Um, and I, I think it's probably just rooted in his life, you know, like he's just, he probably has faced some adversity that he needs to, to address instead of like deflect, and maybe that's how he gets around it. But, um, you know, I think Josh Williams is probably a calming factor for him there. It'll be interesting to see what, what Caden does when he gets on campus. But Caleb is more than capable. Um, I'd still like to see a little bit more burst out of him because I do feel like he kind of plods his way into the line sometimes. That's the one thing I remember from the spring game was like, man, if you hit that, and, and again, it's your teammate, so if he hits that, he's going to hurt somebody probably. But, but again, I, I, I want to see that consistency. I want to see that energy every game because I feel like he's a guy that's playing at like a seven and a half when he's got the full potential to be a nine and a half. Defensively, uh, give up some big plays, <laughs> uh, but obviously you mentioned some of the linebackers flashed yeah. a bit. What did you think about it? I thought, I thought Wes and Witt playing together was nice. Greg Penn, I think, is really going to be an unfun hero on this team. Uh, Major Burns, again, you know, can he stay healthy? Can he stay relevant? Uh, he made some plays. There, there's just issues, though, in the secondary. You know, Sage Ryan, uh, for as veteran as he is, and, you know, talented as he was coming here, there's still some things that, you know, are happening when he's on the field that shouldn't be happening in you know, the middle, you know, middle of the field safety. So just just some, some concerns there. And um, the defensive line, you know, again, you didn't really feel anything from the defensive tackles. Obviously, that's been well addressed, but, but Womack on the edge, I thought, was really, really disruptive. Carpenter, I think 97, yeah. uh, a white guy. I don't remember, you know, even thinking about him, and he had a couple of good plays. So there's, um, there's, you know, there's, it's the spring game, right? And there's some, some, some plays to be had. I think the thing that was telling, and I heard Moscona talk about it, you know, after the game, which is the second team defense really did get the better of the second team offense. And that's, that's positive going forward, right? I mean, like, there's that growth potential there. Um, and luckily, you know, you've got that first-team offensive line that, that should be just dominating people this year. But um, and, and maybe you have to take some of that into account, you know, kind of where the defense is coming from versus where the offense is. 
Did Brian Kelly say anything that piqued your interest on Saturday? Yeah, when he talked about when he talked about Corey Raymond, I tweeted it out. Corey Raymond and uh, Bo Davis being on campus and really opening the door to see some recruits that he hadn't seen in the last couple of years. Um, you know, that just means that they're in on the high end guys now. And if that's because those two are there, then then that that's that's what they're there for, right? Like great players make great coaches. You know, like and nobody needs to get that mistake. Like. That's, that's just the way the world is. And if they can get better players on campus, they'll be a better team and everybody will be happy about it. So let's talk a little bit about baseball before I let you go. No, um, I heard how, you uh, how, how surprised are you about this? I'm shocked, dude. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm stunned. Like, uh, to me, it's like, is there discord in the locker room? Like, is Nate Yefke really just not working out? Like, what are, what is the, what's the real reason? Because there's some, there's, this talent drop off, you know, like I get it. Jay recruited a bunch of hitters and they're not hitting, right? Like, so you're gonna kind of pay the piper for some of that. But like, to just have the ugh, this, this season has been in, in conference play, and I was listening to you when I was driving in, and you know, you're talking about the guys making plays in, in the SEC, and like, quite honestly, it surprised me. You know, that Tommy was hitting as well as he was, that Brad was hitting as well as he is. Um, that surprised me because I, I just feel like nobody. And nobody's certainly hitting in the clutch. I think that's well proven. But to, for them to just fall apart, you know, after the fourth inning, fifth inning, and, and it'd be so consistent, um, man, it just, it just makes you wonder what is going on. And, and as you said, it, the schedule gets easier. But if they don't have that success, then that energy and that belief and that commitment to team, uh, that's just going right down the field. So um, it's, it is. You know, I said it. I said we're well past gut check time. We're in like a, uh, a crisis you know, mode year, at this point. <laughs> 50, 50 year old, fifty years older. You know, like uh, doctor check uh, kind of time. Like you're calling a proctologist. We're going all the way to the end, you know, kind of thing. Like we're past the gut and out the rear end. Like you got to get everything figured out. Like it's just, um, and you would think like there's enough dudes on that team that saw what it looked like, that knows what it takes, that have you know been in the battles. Like I was thinking about this earlier. I was like. My God, were, were Gavin Duga and Cade Boloso like so undervalued, like that? That's where they're at right now, and you know, with this team, like was was um, I know Paul Steens and Dylan Cruz were otherworldly, but I mean, were they like even more amazing than like we ever gave them credit for? For that team to look like it did, and this team, which is similar but different, right? Like you know, you got new guys in, in their roles, but they were there last year. Uh, for it to look like this, it's it's dumbfounding. And like, and I'll defend Jay because I know how hard that dude works. Like, I don't think it's a lack of effort uh, or a lack, lack of experience, like, from him. Um, I do wonder, though, if it's time for him to just pick a roster and roll with it. Like, the, the in and outs and the, you know, he's, you know, he'll say, like, oh, how are you going to handle 162 if you can't handle this, you know, that kind of thing. Like, I mean, like, you got to – at some point, I feel like with this team, just, just – Pick something and go with it for a week at least, and let's see how this works. We'll see. I'll head to Columbia uh, this weekend after a game with UNO coming up tomorrow. Michael Cobble, sports director over at WBRZ. Thanks for the time. Thank you, Hunt. Have a good one. Always enjoy our conversations with Cobble. Um, man, talking a little football and a little baseball. Unfortunately, it's like I I can't. I feel like it's repetitive. It's like I am saddened at the fact that I'm sitting here on tax day and like looking at this baseball team thinking there's just no way they're getting to the regional. Like that is, that is the most fun time of the year for me regional Friday and watching all those games. And a lot of times it's at the box like that. That's just, I love that so much. And I don't even know if we can even talk about it. If LSU's not even in it, <laughs> it's just, it's very, very sad. And I don't know how we, uh, we got to this point, but uh, here we are. So we'll talk some saints coming up next. You are now listening to the hunt Palmer show. Boudreaux's electric. Don't let the power go out at your home or your business. Give the folks at Boudreaux's Electric a phone call. I'll give you a number here in a second. But look, get yourself the peace of mind of knowing that your power is not going out at your home or your business. Give them a call at 985-397-1562. We're down in Napoleonville, but we've got the Gonzalez location open up. If you're anywhere in our listening area down here in South Louisiana, they can service your home or your business with that Generac generator. They're premier 
dealer. That means they're in the top 3% nationwide. Every single generator that they sell you is going to come with either a 7 or 10 year warranty, depending on the type of generator that you purchase. And when it gets installed, it's going to be using the finest and coppers and tubing. And most of that installation is going to be done underground. So that it's aesthetically pleasing outside a place that you take a lot of pride in your home. Give yourself the peace of mind. Know the power's not going to go out, whether it's a summer storm or one of the hurricanes that we tend to have in these parts in the fall. Go ahead and give them a call. Boudreaux's Electric, 985-397-1562. Boudreaux's Electric. Our listeners fire off their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. your next project with John Deere deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. On Tuesday's OTB, let's go, pals. Get it done. Everything on the line versus the Lakers. We'll break it all down. Plus, are you giving up on LSU baseball? Continued spring game takeaways. Off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 1 over 5 ESPN. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. So, last week, the Saints made the signing of Equimania St. Brown official. He'll join the wide receiver crew and, I think, compete for a a roster spot and a role on this team because he's got a skill set that's different than the rest of the crew that they've currently got assembled in New Orleans out wide. Um, So, we discussed that last week, but I thought a little bit of an interesting nugget over the weekend. Equiminia St. Brown has chosen a number. He's going to wear number 13. 
And if memory serves, there was another receiver that was wearing number 13 for the last five years, six, seven years. And I just, it struck me a little bit because there was a time there when he was setting NFL records that you figured Michael Thomas's number was destined to go into the rafters. Like, nobody wears number eight for the Saints. That's Archie's. Nobody wears number nine. That one will go up for Drew Brees. And even Marcus Colston, after he finished his time, it was four years before someone wore his number. Like, 12 was off limits for a few years. And I think everyone realized, like, I don't think anyone is going to suggest that Michael Thomas's number is going to be retired because the injuries just derailed the whole thing. And it really became more of like a three-year blip than a sustained long career or a run. It was just, it was a fever dream. It was so fast. It was so awesome. And then it was over. So I'm not shocked that someone else is wearing 13, not in the least. But it's just another reminder of like how this thing went south. I would say quickly, but it wasn't even that quick. It just went so south between the Saints and Michael Thomas. And a career that we thought was going to be long and illustrious in New Orleans was not long. It was illustrious for a short bit. And then it was sour. And I'm curious if that's going to be repaired. My sincere guess is yes. Over time, Saints fans will overwhelmingly look back at Michael Thomas's time as a positive because of the greatness he displayed over a three-year time where he was the best wide receiver, most productive wide receiver in the National Football League. And time heals the wound of what happened next, where he's MIA, and then they don't know what the injury is, and then he waits to have surgery, and then he comes back, and he's got to have surgery, and then he's on Twitter, and he's bashing the staff, and he doesn't like Dennis Allen, and he and Derek Carr don't get along, and then he's out the door, and he's bashing the staff on the way out, and saying that then he's all over Jeff Duncan's case, and like there was just so much there late that in the middle of it, you're like, God, would you just chill out? Would you just grow up a little bit? But... I think when you look back, it'll be a positive memory. And I don't know if Michael Thomas comes back to honor Drew Brees. There's no Super Bowl that he's got to be a part of remembering over the years with reunions and whatnot. So maybe the relationship just kind of fizzles and it just doesn't exist anymore. But you know, when when we talk about Michael Thomas, when I look on Twitter and see some of the reactions, like it feels like the majority of Saints fans are kind of put out with the way that it ended. I'm like, just go away. There are still some that that stand solid behind Michael Thomas, and they think the organization's to blame for some of this stuff, and they, they stand by their guy who was maybe their favorite player at the time. But the majority, I think, is like, dude, enough. Will will be a number 13, a new one, this, uh, this coming year. Equimania St. Brown will don that number, and it will not go up in the rasters anytime soon. I don't think. Maybe I'm wrong, and if you think that, that his number, because of that incredible run and record-breaking success that he had in a short time, if that warrants getting your jersey retired, voice that opinion. I'm, I'm curious to see if there's anybody that thinks that, but I think that this uh, this marriage is, is dissolved. It's time for Equiminius to come in and rock the number 13. If you're looking for your Saints news, you can find it uh, on YouTube. Hunt on Saints is our YouTube channel, Hunt on Saints. Always appreciate it if you'd like, subscribe, rate, and review that YouTube channel. Saints content goes up each and every day um, from our show here. And if you want that to come straight to your homepage, Hunt on Saints is where you can find it. You can subscribe to the channel right here. Our uh, Monday show is brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products, gcopnet.com, gcopnet.com. You can do business in any business with, with the mom and pop shop. You'll have a great relationship, might get the lowest price, local vendor, but maybe they don't have the capability and the resources to totally take care of your needs. You can do business with the huge conglomerate where you're just a number on a line and they've got all the resources in the world, but you might not get anybody if you make a phone call. You might have to get a recorded line. Could be customer service, a bit of an issue. That's when you work with Gulf Coast Office Products, you get the best of both worlds. You get the relationship with a local company right here that can be there at the drop of the hat. It's accessible by phone and can drop in and see you. 
And you also get the resources. They got over a million dollars on site here in Baton Rouge of inventory ready to go. Your printers, copiers, scanners. You're going to have a great relationship with your rep, whether it's Trey or anybody else that's awesome over there at Gulf Coast Office Products, but they can help you out with your printing, scanning, copier needs, whatever those may be, whether it's the best pricing in terms of leasing, whether it's servicing, maybe it's a replacement. Gulf Coast Office Products can always help you out with all of that. If you don't ever give any thought to what your printer, scanner, and copier is doing, maybe you should. Contact Gulf Coast Office Products, gcopnet.com, and check them out. They bring you our Monday shows each and every week. And we come back, got a little bit more to talk to LSU basketball. Got some good news over the weekend. And Brian Kelly uh, met with media after the spring game. We'll get to some of that as well. You're listening to a Monday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Platinum Window Tent. Platinum Window Tent LLC.com is the website. We know that heat's coming. We know getting in the car after it's been sitting out in the sun all day, not a lot of fun. You start sweating immediately. It's not a very pleasant thing. And I'm not telling you you can completely prevent that because that would be selling you a bill of goods that might be a little steep. However, you can help with that heat if you just tint the windows on your car. Platinum Window Tent, happy to do that for you on the automobile side. Check out their work. It's online at their great new website, PlatinumWindowTentLLC.com. It's PlatinumWindowTentLLC.com. Beat the heat because we all know it's coming soon with Platinum Window Tent at PlatinumWindowTentLLC.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, hardy plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Charles Hanniger, join us for the Tuesday edition of Live at Lunch from Mike Anderson Seafood, Wesley at Nicholson. We're getting you ready for the NBA play-in between the Pels and Lakers. And Andy Isco joins us from Las Vegas. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. Tuesday on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge.
You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. I think some positive news for Matt McMahon and the LSU men's basketball program over the weekend. Uh, we mentioned last week that Tyrell Ward announced that he would be back for another season at LSU. Jalen Reed did the same. I guess that's the that's where we are in collegiate athletics now, where you have to announce that you're going to stay on the team and not enter the transfer portal. Um, but they did. And uh, I think that's a good thing. Um, Matt McMahon is attempting to have an older basketball team every single year. Um, and I think it's his preference that the older basketball team comes from guys that are, are three, three-year, four-year players in his program. That, of course, hasn't been possible the last couple of years because he's only been here for two years. But this is the first class that he's brought in and had a chance to develop. And he's always going to go to the transfer portal like they did uh, to get Sears last week and like they did to get Coleman uh, or Carter. Cam Carter, Cam Coleman. I can't remember. Cam Carter. Uh, Cam Carter, uh, I, I said it wrong last week, and somebody tweeted at me. I'll figure it out by next basketball season, I promise. Um, I know his story. I know Donaldsonville to Oak Hill to Mississippi State to Kansas State to here, and I can give you some statistics on him. His name, however, uh, escapes me a little bit. But they're always going to go to the transfer portal and find some guys, and they're going to have to do that as well. But I think having guys in your program for a lot of years is is a good thing, one, for, for the basketball team that you're going to put out on the floor to have guys that you've had. And I think it also speaks volumes that even though it hasn't been – a, a wildly successful two years in terms of making the NCAA tournament or you know contending for the SEC, it says that Jalen Reed and, and Tyrell Ward are, are, are happy here, which is a good thing. If, if things are good when you're not winning a ton, that means that you've got a pretty solid culture, I think, from the outside looking in. Jalen Reed really did take a nice step into year two. He's not an all-conference player. He's not going to be conference player of the year. He's not looking like an NBA lottery pick, but he is making steps forward as a college basketball player. As a freshman, he was asked to play more than he probably should have um, on that team, but obviously it's Matt McMahon's first year. And he struggled, uh, especially on the offensive side of things. He uh, shot only 40% from the floor. When you're talking about a 6'9", 6'10", player shooting 40% from the floor, that's generally speaking not great. He was a 54% free throw shooter. He had some real turnover problems trying to put the ball on the floor and get into the rim, and he cleaned a lot of that up this year. He went from being a 40% uh, field goal shooter to a 52% field goal, so a 12-point jump there in terms of his field goal shooting. I thought he really improved his three-point shooting as well. He was 4 of 14 as a freshman. Uh, this year, 13 of 33, that was 39% from three-point range. It's not the prettiest jump shot I've ever seen, but he did a pretty good job of knocking that down. He improved his uh, free throw percentage by eight percentage points this year. 62% is not great, but it's getting better. Maybe he can up that to 68 70% uh, this coming year, which would be very, very good. Uh, he got on the glass and rebounded it for a game. Um, and his turnovers were a little bit better. He doubled his assist totals this year. So, again, this is a nice role player. It's not every day you find 6'11 guys that can put the ball on the floor and finish. He needs to be better at that. I think the fact that he did show he could flash a bit of a three-point shot is going to help with guys closing out on him that he can go back around and put the ball on the floor. So they still need help on the block and in the post. They need a true five, which Jalen Reed's not necessarily – a true five, they need one of those, and they're going to go out in the transfer portal and find it somewhere. Um, but it's good to have him back in the front court. Your back court is looking pretty settled with with Carter and Sears and Ward and Williams. Um, you're, you've done a pretty good job of recruiting on that front, and it looks, in terms of the minutes you're going to dole out, pretty secure. However, they do need some help in the front court, so hopefully they'll go ahead and, and do that as well here in the coming days. Transfer portal all over the place from a basketball perspective. Uh, let's talk some more football here. Brian Kelly met with the media after the spring game. Um, and, you know, I talked about Garrett Nussmeyer uh, at the top of the show today, but I did want to get kind of Brian Kelly's thoughts on you know, what he thought of Garrett, not only really in the in the spring game, but in, in the entirety of the spring as he's kind of taken over as the leader of the offense. I thought it was good. You know, I, I thought there was a run read where he tried to spit the ball out early with Major Burns. You know, Major kind of plays with him a little bit on the line of scrimmage off, playing a little bit of cat and mouse. And, you know, I told him, listen, if he's on the line of scrimmage, he can't get into his B-gap fit. Just hand the ball off. He can't get there. And proximity sometimes forces him to do some things that he shouldn't do. So other than that, I thought he did a really nice job. The throw uh, as he stepped up in the pocket was, you know, quintessential in terms of what he's able to do. He keeps his eyes down the 
field. That's a huge thing, right? As he steps up in the pocket, he sees, you know, an open receiver down the field. I thought he was clean today. I thought he was efficient. I thought he did the things that we expected him to do. That play that he's talking about when he stepped up and made the third to Kyron Lacey was a coverage bust. It was a bust early. Uh, Kyron Lacey was running wide open. I was sitting in the press box, and I saw him run. I literally said out loud, a bust. And Nuss didn't see it immediately, but then he stepped up and saw it there. And there were a few coverage busts by the LSU defense uh, in the game. And Brian Kelly addressed those busts uh, in the press conference after things had uh, settled down. Well, one of them was cover two, and we're in cover three, and we're playing cover two. I mean, so the corner's rolled up. He's supposed to be a deep defender. I mean, you can't have those kind of mistakes. They're unacceptable, and, and that's going to cost you a chance to be on the field. So that's one thing. And then we just got flat-out outrun for the football. You know, we were in a coverage that we're supposed to be over the top. We just got flat-out beat in those those situations. So sometimes you just got to take a hard look at who do we have and what kind of situations do we put them in against, you know, an elite receiver question is okay is it too early to tell if the defense is going to be good uh, I, I would suggest that it probably is a little bit early uh, you don't have the entirety of what your defense will be and you know we'll see a little bit more of that kind of in the fall when they when they put that group together but Brian Kelly was asked like can you tell if the defense is going to be good I know the basic tenets of defense relative to the believability, the energy, the want to, all those things are going to be there, which are important as a foundation. They'll be there. Then we got to execute. And so we need to get some help at the defensive tackle position, which we will. We're addressing it. And we got to, you know, obviously figure out, you know, what our corner situation is going to be. I think we answer those two. I think this defense will be a, a solid defense. We do know that Harold Perkins is going to be pretty good because he's been here for two years and he's been pretty good. Um, but the role may be changing a little bit here. So Brian Kelly was asked about his junior linebacker. I thought Harold Perkins um, did a really nice job working in the box um, and, you know, seeing counter. And, so I, you know, we were purposeful in, in running the ball at him and, and making him defend and get over the top of the veer block of the tackle. And, uh, and then getting the back out and, and, and forcing him to, you know, to, to tackle that. So, you know, that was really good to see. I, I saw Harold Perkins make some plays, um, if, if we're being honest. I thought he did a pretty good job. The Weeks brothers probably had more plays. Uh, they were out there a lot. But uh, I thought that Harold Perkins flashed a little bit. I'm, I'm curious about where the pass rush comes from this team. Um, and I think Deshaun Womack is the most hopeful of that group. I think, you know, obviously Savion Jones is, is still here and you've got some older players, but Womack um, didn't play a ton last year and I think needs to be involved heavily this year. And so Brian Kelly was asked about his, his defensive end. I like what he's doing. Um, he's made a lot of progress and he's ready to play. You know, we, he's, he's building a bank of trust. He didn't have a lot in there, but he's building it. Um, and, and I like where he's going. Um, we like his energy. We like his, uh, the way he cares about what he's doing. And, um, yeah, I, I think he's going to make an impact in our defense. It, this is going to be my chorus, I think, as I look at this LSU team and specifically the defense. My chorus probably all summer and into the fall is going to be like, I don't expect him to be a top five defense in the country. I don't really expect him to be a top five defense in the SEC if I'm being completely honest. What I'm asking is for them to make some big plays. Get a turnover here or there. Get a big sack. Get a big TFL. Strip sack. Like Make some negative plays to either put the, def the offense behind the chains or to change the field position. They're going to get they're gonna get some yards on LSU defense, but make some big plays. And so Womack is one of the guys. But I think Gabe Relaford maybe showed in the game that he might be a guy that can do that as well. We saw him come off the edge and get a sack. And you know, those early enrollees sometimes are a little bit more prepared in the fall than the rest of their classmates. So what's the next step for Gabe Relaford? Gabe was going up against a freshman, right? And he's a freshman. I get that. But, you know, now we're going to have to take Gabe and we're going to have to get Gabe some reps against, you know, Will Campbell. We're going to have to get him up against Emory, you know, because he's earned that now that we've got to be able to, to see what he looks like against those guys. All this development has got to come from the new coaches that LSU has got on the defensive side of the football. And we know that it's a star-studded group. We know they've got a lot of skins on the wall, and I think everybody feels pretty good about where things stand from a coaching staff perspective on defense. But the question is, like, how quick can that impact be? And, and Kelly talked about the impact that Bo Davis on the defensive front, Corey Raymond on the back end, have been through one spring. 
the long approach to this is just look at who's on campus, you know, who we're recruiting. And look, we got to win right away. And, and, and I get that. And we're going to put together a defense that puts us in a position to win the SEC. But if you want to look at this from a, a longer view, I, I've had a lot of players in front of me over the past three months since we've hired those two that I hadn't seen in a couple of years. So that's a really good thing because we're going to we're going to get the guys that we need at those positions and Bo and Corey are making an impact there. That's just not all that shocking. <laughs> Corey Raymond and Bo Davis at multiple stops over the course of their careers have recruited at a very, very, very high level. And I have no doubt that they're going to do the same thing here at LSU. I say this all the time. I don't know a better path to winning a championship than recruiting really good high school players. I think that's the best way to do it. Now, Lane Kiffin is going to attempt to do it the other way because I don't know that he can get the highest level in high school players. And so I think the guys that Ole Miss is pulling out of the transfer portal are solid starter level players. I don't think he's getting, and I'll just use just some names, I don't think he's getting Jamar Chase, Leonard Fournette, Jamal Adams, Patrick Peterson, type impact players who go in the top 35 picks in the draft and are all Americans out of the transfer portal. You can get starters out of the transfer portal. You can get, and to just use some other names, Jarek Bernard Converse or Logan Diggs out of the transfer portal. Those are good players. But the elite of the elite that win championships at LSU, I think more often are going to come out of the transfer portal. Every once in a while, you know, Jameer Gibbs is available in the transfer portal from Georgia Tech to Alabama. Like, that does exist. But I think when you're talking about the elite-level players in college football, more often than not, to me, that's going to be high school guys. I mean, I can start thinking of some names of guys that have transferred that have been elite-level I was going to say, I think, I, think the only, I think quarterback is a position where yes. that's different. But other, sure. than, other than that, I think you're right. I mean, Jamison Williams went from Ohio State to Bama and was fantastic. We just saw the opposite with, I can't even remember his name, but the five-star state, Caleb Downs. From Bama goes to Ohio State, and that it does happen. But if you're if, if you're talking about Lane Kevin bringing in 15 guys in a transfer portal class, like you're not gonna have the stars of stars in those transfer classes, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, if you're talking about having five star guys who end up being top 40 picks in the NFL draft that win Thorpe awards and stuff, I think those, generally speaking, are gonna come more often from high school than they are from college. And LSU is obviously doing a really good job of building that high school class. So those are some thoughts from Brian Kelly uh, after Saturday's spring game. If you want to catch that on YouTube, you certainly can at Hunt on LSU. Hunt on LSU over on YouTube. Our Monday show is brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. we got one segment left on the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Visit us at LaBear's Baton Rouge Casino this spring for all the hoops and hockey playoff action. we got the biggest screens, the best food and drink, Plus, we're giving away pin cash bonuses and prizes to pin play rewards members. If you're not a member, no big deal. You can join today, download, and register for the pin play app from the App Store. You can unlock all the fun, including a chance to win up to $2,000 in pin cash. It's all this and more. Make LaBear's Baton Rouge Casino your spring sports viewing headquarters. They got all the screens, all the great dishes, all the beverages, all the energy. Got to be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 522 4700. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the jimsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the jimsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes Benz Vans. Jerry and Benny Payne 
began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985. Moscona inviting joins for Monday's AFR presented by Relief Windows. We'll recap the LSU spring game, the Tigers and Vols in baseball, and we'll know the Pels playoff destination. Join us Monday, 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Tell you happens to us all. Mark your calendar and invite your friends as we celebrate the NFL draft in style with the Boudreaux Electric ESPN Baton Rouge draft party live from Don Juan's Cigar Bar and exclusively on the 104.5 ESPN YouTube channel. Join us next Thursday, April 25th at 7 p.m. and hang with the ESPN Baton Rouge Dream Team while indulging in the finest cigars paired with signature cocktails. It's the Boudreaux Electric ESPN Baton Rouge draft party at Don Juan Cigar Bar and live on the 104.5 ESPN YouTube channel. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products. So, Beck, how about the the weekend for Neil Shipley and his buddy who caddied for him? Yeah. Um, for those that aren't familiar with the story, you don't have to be a big golf fan to get this, but Neil Shipley qualified for the the Masters based on his fam- finish at the U.S. Amateur um, at Cherry Hills in Denver. And so he gets into the tournament. Makes the cut. He's the low amateur at the event. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, the tee times for Sunday are just obviously uh, made based on standing in, in the tournament. So he gets that text message. You're going off with Tiger Woods on Sunday at Augusta, which is incredible in its own, right? But I'm sure Shipley could have possibly envisioned that. Yeah. The guy who could not have envisioned that is Neil Shipley's buddy, who played high school golf, a little bit of college golf, is 20 years old, and gets a call from Shipley says, hey, will you come caddy for me at the Masters? Now all of a sudden, he is walking 18 holes with Tiger Woods, shaking hands on the 18th green. I mean, that's just, that's incredible stuff. Yeah, I I, uh, I actually produced uh, OTB this morning, and we they did their segment Weekend Winners, and he was my weekend winner because, like you said, I, I I do think that maybe he could envision playing with Tiger, but just just the the reality of it once it actually yeah. happens, and then uh, and then he and of course he gets to go to Butler Cabin, and he he does he died. I told told you I talked about this earlier. People were talking about it on Twitter, but a reporter asked him because apparently this reporter saw on one of the one of the fairways that Tiger handed him a note of or some sort or something like that, and he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. That didn't happen. So he's already uh, he's already getting in with Tiger, and uh, it seems like uh, maybe there that uh, there's some kind of uh, good relationship there after that round. But 
Uh, yeah, it's pretty incredible, and uh, and not and also that he also he also played better than Tiger did. He he uh, shot he shot a better. I mean, most people did, but yes. still, I mean, he he can say that he played with Tiger and uh, and beat him so. at Augusta. At Augusta, Sunday. yes, absolutely not. All right, let's play some take it or leave it. All right, first one here. I know you're not going to like to hear this, hon. I'm sure you saw the news, but there are reports that Live Golf have offered Rory McIlroy a offer to the tune of. Yes, this is this is correct. I mean, not not to say this is 100% accurate. We don't know. The reports aren't confirmed yet. But 850 million dollars plus a 2% stake in the league. Take it or leave it. I'll leave it. Um, so, 2% stake in the league that hemorrhages money. So, what yeah. is that even worth? Well, I, I that's what I was thinking too. Like but it, that I, league loses millions and millions and millions every time they do anything yeah they have no tv revenue they're doling out massive purses every single week time they play it's uh yeah i, I mean look i certainly john rom flipped he had said i am never gonna go to live I, I don't think that's a real golf league whatever and all that kind of stuff and he flipped because he got ticked off of jay monahan and now he's wandering in anonymity but um, Rory was so outspoken. It was so much the poster child for the league. It just, it would be so odd if if he went. It would be, but but to me, looking at it, like I, I was talking to my brother about it, and he was like, if he did this, I would have, I would lose all respect for him. Like I won't because he was so outspoken for the PGA, yeah. and then they a year later they turn around and say they're gonna they're gonna partner with Live. I wouldn't blame him if he did it. To be honest with you, no. I mean, look, it's that. That's why Rom went. Rom yeah. went because he thought he could be the guy that crossed the picket line, and that means we all come back together. But there are players on the tour that are that are hurt by the fact that they turned down the money, did what they thought was the right yeah. thing, and now you're just going to turn around and let those guys right back in. And it, so it's complicated and it's sticky, and I don't know how long we are. I mean, look, Paul McGinley said on live from on the Golf Channel that he thought it'd be two or three more years before we could figure something out. So. It's uh, it's a mess. Golf's in a terrible place, um, which is a bummer. But um, we'll see. I'm still excited to watch Hilton Head this week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on here. The Pels were smoked by the Lakers, uh, which also happened the last time they played them in the regular season finale, and they will play them in the play-in. The play-in for this team is a disappointment. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. I'll take it. When you just phrase it like that, it is a disappointment they're in the play. And when yeah. you realize that they've won more games than anybody who's ever had to go to the play-in, like you realize that it wasn't a, a completely disastrous season. The West was just good. Coach. Yeah, the West is just great. And it's a bummer that they had that much success and, and couldn't get it done. But you look at not being able to get it done on your home floor against the Lakers. You look at losing a game to the Spurs where Zion doesn't play. Like it just a few things broke the wrong way. And now they're in a little bit of trouble, I think. But we'll see. Yeah. Maybe they can figure it out this week. All right, moving on to the next one here. The Cubs are 9-6 and six through 15 games. Not bad, but that's good for fourth in the NL Central. The NL Central is actually good this year. Take it or leave it. Leave it. Uh, the Brewers will not be good, even though they look good right now. The Pirates will not be good, even though they look good right now. We'll see if Paul Skeens gets up at any time soon. But, no, I, I don't think the Central is good. I think this is like the Pirates got off to a great start last year. They did. They were terrible. Right, yeah. So um, I think the Cubs are playing well. Uh, I've enjoyed watching them. I need Justin Steele to come back here for the Cubs and for my fantasy baseball team. Um, but they're doing okay right now. I, I do wish that they would leave the West Coast because I'm sick of staying up. They played it's obviously not, yeah. the uh, they played out in San Diego and they're playing in Seattle. Now they're in Arizona and it's just yep. it's late nights, but that's all right. It, it was a complete misstep on my part that we didn't realize. I didn't realize that because I took a trip to California. They were yes. playing the Padres and uh, uh, I, I was a complete misstep on my part. We had but already you were in northern we had lo- no. So we started in San Diego uh, okay. and then we drove okay. up to San Francisco. I should have planned around that and been able to go see the Cubbies in Petco, which I think is one of the cooler parks I would in like the to MLB. Go to Pet- uh, but unfortunately, he didn't do it. All right, last one here. Vern Lundquist retired following his 40th Masters yesterday. It was pretty cool getting to see him shake hands with Tiger as he was walking uh, up to the next 17th or 18th. And Uncle Vern, take it or leave it? I'm going to take it. I'll I realize it. that it is in most fans' DNA to dislike the neutral play-by-play guy. Uh, Joe Buck deals with it all the time. And obviously, I think a lot of folks just uh, are ups- didn't love it when Vern was on the SEC calls. He did get a little older there at the end, and he's probably a little better at calling golf shots into a par three than he was dealing with a a Saturday afternoon in Bryant-Denny Stadium. But I thought he did a really good job with SEC football. I thought his voice is iconic and and conjures up so many memories of those 230 CBS kicks. 
And I certainly, obviously, watched the Masters every year, and he was on 16 for my entire uh, years. He was obviously uh, did did some work on other holes, including 17 when Jack Nicklaus made that putt in 86. But I wasn't around for that, so he's 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 synonymous with 16 for me. And I I just I think he's a, a jolly fellow. Uh, I think he there was a sense of security when he was on the air, and I thought he did an awesome job. My buddy met Bern Lundquist um, at either a bar or an airport somewhere. And he, he got to talking with Vern and said, what is the line that they had that people ask you to say? And it was not, yes, sir. And it was not in your life you ever seen anything like that. It was, it was who the hell is Happy Gilmore? From the line in the movie, Happy Gilmore, he said people <laughs> always ask him to say that. And so that's, uh, that's another legacy that Vern leaves, the Happy Gilmore lines. From uh, maybe the Waterbury Open or the, I think it was the Waterbury because 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 it because it, because it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been any tournament after that because then after the, the first tour one, championship yeah no there's no yeah, way though yeah. because everyone he would have yeah. known about him by yeah, then yeah got to so. be the Waterbury Open yeah <laughs> just call well, my neighbor the accountant probably a great golf all right that's it for Monday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show presented by Gulf Coast Office Products if you missed any of it, you can catch it on demand 104.5 ESPN.com's on demand tab Apple Podcast Spotify Google wherever you find your sound or on YouTube a lot of LSU football unfortunately some LSU baseball Michael Cobble on the spring game at two o'clock as well Matt's gonna drive you home next we're back tomorrow same time same place on the Hunt Palmer Show.